Well, welcome everybody to the, your, your beautiful state house, the uh, most gorgeous, well-built one in the whole country. We have school children coming through all the time, and I always point that out to them as a reflection of the greatness of our state. And incidentally, I've learned uh, in more detail recently that the governor's mansion is the same way. What a what a, a beautiful building, and again, is something that we can be proud of that the people of our state did, just like we can be proud of the people of our state, and that's why we're, we're here today. These are the Governor's Awards for Excellence in Science, and uh, as we know, uh, science, there's so many innovations and new things happening, and uh, happening faster and faster around the world, and in order for our country and our state to stay ahead, uh, we, we have to have excellence in science. We have to cultivate the study, the learning. Uh, by the way, I was over in Hartsville at the Governor's School for Science and Math yesterday. Those are high school students, and uh, they, are, they are quite uh, up yeah. there. Uh, I mean, we have enormous talent in this state, and we're here to recognize some of that today. So it's with pleasure that I would we introduced uh, Dr. Don Jordan, who is the co-chair of the Governor's Award for Excellence uh, Committee in Science. He's a professor at the Center for Science Education at the University. Dr. Jordan, if you will. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, Governor. Uh, we're going to begin with the uh, number one excellence in scientific research. So would Carla Danielson escort Dr. Kilpatrick, and he'll be followed by Lee McElwain from SCRA. Congratulations. Go ahead. It is with great excitement and pride and gratitude that I stand before you today to tell you why Dr. Dean Kilpatrick has accomplished true excellence in scientific research in the area of trauma. When I was writing this nomination, there were some aspects that were quite easy to write, to put to paper as we have very quantifiable, very tangible ways to capture success and excellence in scientific research, typically grants, peer-reviewed publications, uh, awards. So let me begin there. So Dr. Kilpatrick began his programmatic line of research in the field of tra trauma over four decades ago. With the launch of this program of research, he founded the National Crime Victims Research and Treatment Center in the Medical University of South Carolina. Indeed, we are celebrating our 40-year anniversary this, this year. Over the next several decades, he wrote, he would go on to lead numerous landmark studies uh, across a no numerous topics in the field of traumatic stress, um, particularly prevalence and impact of traumatic events in large probability samples. Uh, it is through these studies that the field learned that it is not only common to experience potentially traumatic events, um, but also that many are resilient in the aftermath of trauma. And while others may develop post-traumatic stress disorder, depression, substance use problems, for example, we can identify risk and protective factors to target for prevention and treatment. Under his leadership, the National Crime Victim Center has led over $80 million in grants, with D Dr. Kilpatrick leading over 16 million of that as principal investigator. He has over 350 peer-reviewed publications. He has served on two institutes of medicine and one National Academy of Science committee. He is past president of the International Society of Traumatic Stress Studies, uh, and uh, he was awarded uh, the President's Award for Outstanding Contributions to Victims of Crime presented by President George H.W. Bush in 1990. So that was the easy part of the application to write, but I was overwhelmed by how to capture the true impact, the excellence of research he has had on the citizens of South Carolina, the citizens of the United States, and the citizens of the world. I couldn't possibly do so in a three to five page narrative, and I cannot possibly do so right now in a two to three minute presentation. But what I can tell you is that when we are talking about researching trauma, we are talking about delving into very tough topics. We are talking about areas that most people would rather not talk about, like rape, child abuse, terrorism. Dean has brought light to these areas that others would prefer to keep in the darkness. This light has been a guiding force for those of us in the traumatic stress research field who have the privilege to collaborate with and be mentored by Dean.
Most importantly, this light has served as a beacon of hope to the thousands upon thousands of people who've benefited the research born from Dean's work, whether it be from improved assessment, improved intervention, intervention or improved prevention. On behalf of these trauma victims, thank you, Dean, for all of your excellence in science you have accomplished to date and all that you continue to do. We are so thrilled to be, honor you, be able to be here today to honor you. Dean Patrick. Uh, Dean? Dr. Patrick, don't forget to. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Thank you. Our pleasure. Thanks, Thank Doctor? This is for the Scientific uh, Awareness Award it with Dr. Connie Best, escort our winner, Dr. Schmidt, to the podium, followed by co chair Bill Perkle. Good afternoon. It is an honor to be here to be able to talk about one of my distinguished colleagues. For the past 30, excuse me, the past 28 years, Dr. Michael G. Smith has been one of the most visible proponents of science awareness in South Carolina, in the state, and in the nation. For, uh, from one of his earliest activities, the, the creation of interactive science-based CD-ROMs for middle school uh, science students which at the time was considered such cutting edge technology that the U.S. Secretary of Energy, uh, Dr. Hazel O'Leary, actually included a description of this project by Dr. Smith and one of his colleagues, Dr. Mary Malden, who's also in the audience, uh, that she talked about it and did a demonstration of that uh, CD-ROM um, uh, interactive technology in her testimony before the U.S. Senate when she was discussing STEM education. Uh, to one of his more recent um, activities, he, is, he was the inaugural speaker and also a coach for TED Talk Charleston. Um, that, is a, that is a format um, that now helps communicate science information to a new generation of learners. He has, been significantly, he has significantly raised the level of science awareness in our state. Dr. Smith's reputation as a scientist in the field of microbiology is stellar. He has made substantial contributions, most notably in his research on antimicrobial copper alloy to dramatically decrease the rate of acquired, hospital acquired infections such as MRSA and C. diff. Uh, <clears throat> but as important as the science is, as equally important as his ability to communicate and educate the public and increase awareness of science, of the science underlying important health crises, not just for the health acquired in, um, infections, but also for Ebola, the Zika virus, and bioterrorism threats. His work appears in uh, peer-reviewed journals, as well as the popular press, such as Glamour Magazine, Good Housekeeping, Red Book, and in the national print media, media, such as the Wall Street Journal, the New York Times, the Washington Post, and numerous national radio and television interviews. Um, Dr. Smith has had several, been on several national um, task force and policy-making committees, and <clears throat> his ability to take highly complicated subject matter and explain it in understandable terms is greatly valued by students, colleagues, policymakers, and the general public alike. And that is why he is frequently and affectionately referred to as South Carolina's Bill Nye the Science Guy. Um, his tireless efforts in promoting science awareness and education such as <clears throat> in such a, an approachable and compelling manner clearly warrants his distinction in, in this award that he is receiving today. Thank you. Yes. Dr. Schmidt. Thank you. There you go. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. The check. Thank you, Bill. Dr. Yolden. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Next, we have the uh, Young Research Scientist Award. Uh, we need Dr. Jamel Khan, along with President Harris Pastides, along with Dr. Nagokati, VP for Research, and Hossein, uh, Hossein Hajahara, Dean of Engineering. Thank you. 
come to the podium, please escort our winner, Dr. Chen. Honorable Governor, esteemed dignitaries, and respected families and friends. I'm Jamil Khan, Chair of the Mechanical Engineering Department at USC, and it's my pleasure today to introduce Chen Li in front of you. Chen received his PhD degree in 2009 from uh, RPI and has been working with us since then in the department. His advisor is currently the president of Georgia Tech, Bud Peterson, so he's from a good stock. During his short tenure at USC, he has rapidly built a world-class research program and established himself as a prominent young investigator in the field of two-phase transport and thermal energy which plays a critical role in conserving energy, such as in thermal power plants, desalination, petroleum refinery, and heating and ventilation processes. With the advancement of technology, the microchips are getting smaller and smaller. And they're getting faster and more powerful, more slow which is perfectly good, but it comes with a challenge. The challenge is these devices are very powerful and they dissipate enormous amount of heat from a small area. And that has to be taken away. So this is one of the area where chance high heat flux, two phase, cooling research is providing cutting edge solution. His research has made tremendous advancement to manage two-phase flow instabilities in micro channels in order to implement two-phase cooling technology in microchips and electronic devices. In addition to two-phase research, he has also proposed and demonstrated several new technologies which are promising in addressing water, energy, food nexus for the US and the world. For example, cooling towers and power plants use enormous amount of fresh water which we have short supply. In Colombia alone, Google, with their new server, they're using 4,000 million gallons of water a day. So Chen proposed, took advantage of uh, uh, mammal sweating cooling, and he proposed a dry cooling where we inject small amount of water and create highly efficient dry cooling condenser, which can be applied for thermal power plants and save enormous amount of money. Because of his groundbreaking work, he has been recognized as one of the breakthrough stars at USC, has won Research Progress Award in the College of Engineering and Technology this year, and from American Society of Mechanical Engineer, he won an outstanding early career award, ICNMM. Chen is an excellent teacher. He is advising 15 graduate students, and he teaches classes that have more than 100 students in some cases. Very popular teacher, and he's a valuable colleague. I believe that he will continue to advance his research leadership and make further contribution to the state of South Carolina. 
He is and he will be an asset to the state of South Carolina. Thank you. Check. Those of you wondering, he's 40. And, uh, thank you, Price Barnett from Weyerhaeuser, who supports this award. We really appreciate it. Along with the South Carolina Research Authority, which supported the first award, Excellence in Science. We're now to number four, Excellence in Research for a Institution maybe without a graduate program or, you know, a stronger graduate program, but valuable to, to, to South Carolina. Uh, Dr. Laura Wright, would you please escort the winner, Dr. Tim Hanks, and along with Bill Pennington from Clemson, and a former winner, John Wheeler from Furman. It's my pleasure to present to you Professor Timothy Hanks from Furman University. He has been at Furman for 27 years now, and I remember when we hired him, we thought we had a gem, and he's turned out to be a diamond. His research with undergraduates has been phenomenal. He has mentored over 115 students so far in his research labs. These students have gone on to um, premier graduate programs around the country, to medical schools here within the state as well as throughout the country. They have gone on to careers in law and in teaching because he has taught them how to think on their feet and how to be prepared for what's coming next in their whatever their career may be. His research is focused in the area of materials that you can form with interesting chemical interactions, some very weak interactions formed by halogen bonds, others more robust in the formation of polymeric materials for use in bioimplants, and currently he has some projects working on anti-biofouling materials. So far, he's raised about $3.5 million in external grant funds to keep his research lab running. And in addition to raising funds for his own research, he's been an excellent departmental uh, steward. He's raised a little over $2 million for departmental infrastructure, as well as our um, NSF REU summer program, which brings in research teams from other schools in the area, faculty members and students from schools that are not as well equipped as Furman. And so we're serving as research incubator and that was Tim's idea. He's one of our idea people. And when I was putting his nomination together, I couldn't think of anyone else that I'd rather be writing that nomination for. It's been my pleasure to work with Tim the entire time he's been at Furman and it's my pleasure to introduce him to you, Governor. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. come to the booth, please? Gentlemen? All right, right here. And one, two, three. There you go. Thank you, sir. Thank you. You go now. <laughs> I'm, I'm finished. You finished? Yeah, yeah, okay. you, you, you can. Oh, all right. Except well, for getting you elected. <laughs> y'all, thank you. This is a, it's a real treat to, to see these people and hear what they're doing. And I'm always reminded that if we're going to be strong as a state and if our 
children will get stronger and be happy. We, we have to be always moving ahead into the new frontier and through research and innovation and uh, high, highly technical fields that uh, most of us uh, don't even realize that we're encountering. It's those kind of things that produce the discoveries and the actions that cascade down into business and industry and health and make us stronger and better. So th this, is a, this is a great day for South Carolina to have all of, all of you here. And we're looking forward to much more as we move forward. And thank you everybody for coming. Dr. Jordan, thank you.